Hi everyone, welcome back to Patrick's Lab. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It's kind of one of those childish things that I just, it's at the grocery store. I see these and I instantly thought of, there's a Peter Brown video. He's, if you don't know him, he's a really cool YouTuber. He does a lot of different things, cast in resin. And he made a cake stand out of sprinkles infused with resin. And so every time I see these, I really want to do something with them. So we're going to make rings out of sprinkles today. So I want to try a whole bunch of different things. We'll add a little bit of glow, I'm thinking. We've got blue and red glow powder here. Those are the two colors I think would go best with what we've got going. We might be able to like mix them both in the same batch. And then I want to try a whole bunch of different things. These ones, these are bigger sprinkles. I'm worried that if we cast it and cut into them too much, it's going to affect the way they look. It might not look as good. I'm not sure what the cross section of these are like, if they're the same color all the way through. I can actually just look right now. Yeah, they are. So I think that'll look pretty good. If they weren't, or if I still don't prefer that look, we might be able to do something like picking a tube where we already have the outer diameter we want, where we'll literally just polish the outside of it, but then we'll just size it up on the inside. And that'll be more of a novelty. And obviously, sprinkle ring, it's gonna be a novelty in the first place, but the size of the tube would dictate the size of the ring, so we couldn't exactly do one precisely unless you had a whole bunch of tubes. But I wanna try a few different things. I wanna do it really dense, so it literally, like if I just unscrewed this and poured resin in it, it'd just be super dense with all the sprinkles. So I think between all these different combinations, I think we really will come up with something pretty cool. This is kind of a silly idea, but I actually do think the results are gonna be genuinely interesting, so I'm excited to try it out. So my first step is going to be measuring out the amount of resin that I wanna use, and I'm just using a scale to do this, and this will determine the amount of catalyst that I wanna use later. And then we've got our three different cups. I'm gonna be doing three different things. The first one, I'm just adding these circular kind of green purple and blue spheres and then the other two I'm doing regular sprinkles with and then I actually wanted to experiment with the amount of glow powder that I put in the two castings and so for the glow powder ones I ended up doing another one and that one had a little bit less and you can see for the final product I actually wanted to go for the more opaque one I think it kind of looks cool it kind of looks like frosting on a cake or a donut and so I think it really goes well with the theme that we've got going here. Then for my next step I'm going to be taking these four acrylic tubes here and I'm putting tape on the bottom that'll seal it off and then I spray in a little bit of mold release that'll make it easier to separate the material from the tube. Now once I have everything completely prepared this is when I add the catalyst and it's important to do this last because the second you mix in that catalyst you're starting the clock off when this is going to start hardening so you want to be as quick as possible. So I add catalyst to one mix it very thoroughly that's very important to get it all mixed and then pour it into our casting tube and then I repeat the process on the next three of them then I put them in the vacuum chamber this will completely get rid of any bubbles that we have here if you're wanting to do this at home I would recommend using a polyester resin those do a lot better at not getting bubbles in them I did that in this video as well but I wanted to use the vacuum as a final precaution I had a lot of different particles mixed in here obviously with those sprinkles and so that can sometimes trap a lot of bubbles in there and so just to be safe because I have it I went ahead and used the vacuum chamber anyways if you're wanting to try this at home and you don't have a vacuum chamber you can probably get away without using one but I just thought I'd use mine just to be safe now the cure time on this resin is about 24 hours but I went ahead and I played it safe I waited 24 days but no just kidding I actually did this before I moved and it just took me a long time to get around to it so that's why you'll notice at the beginning of the video I'm in my old shop and then I finished making up the ring in my new shop. Not that you'd be able to tell, it's just an overhead camera of my lathe because I don't have my setup how I want it yet. So the moral of the story is don't be like me. Don't wait 24 days to get around to this. Do it within 24 hours. This is a fun, very simple project and you're gonna see the results. They're actually really cool. I love the way this ring turned out. All right, so we've got our material ready to work with, and it's kind of the moment of truth right now. We're going to see if we're actually able to machine these. And there could be a lot of issues that we run into, and so I was kind of nervous heading into this. We could have had a lot of air bubbles trapped inside, and also just the fact that these blanks are more sprinkled than they actually are resin. And so sprinkles, obviously, probably not the best choice if you're looking for a strong, sturdy, sturdy material to machine. So I just took it really easy. One thing I found was that it's good to use a higher RPM on the lathe. That way I could just get it in make some clean cuts I don't want to leave the tool touching the material for too long that could cause the resin to overheat and melt and then it just makes the surface of the ring gunky and it just leaves a really bad surface finish on there it starts streaking and looking bad
so it took a little bit of getting used to, but overall it wasn't too difficult. I just switched between my different materials to hollow out the inside, as well as trim the final diameter on the outside, and then I got my very basic ring shape made, and so I used my cutoff bit and then I just slice off our piece here. And you can see just like that, we've got a ring shape. I just trim it up with the Dremel a little bit. So there's obviously a bit more work to do on that ring before it's finished, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the next blank. That way I can just kind of mass produce these, do all the same steps at the same time. And take a second and look at my lathe. It just kind of looks like there was a Lucky Charms Massacre or something on it. There's just rainbow color everywhere. You got the white from the resin and then just all the different colors from the sprinkles. It was ridiculous. My entire shop was just rainbow colored just everywhere and you want to be especially careful because these sprinkle shavings everywhere they can become a big mess really quickly if you get these wet you're just gonna have dissolved sugar all over everything and so when I was done I was really careful I vacuumed everything up made sure it's not gonna cause any problems for me now for the other two rings I'm making, I just followed the exact same steps as I did before. I made some of them a little bit larger, I made one of them smaller just so we'd have a variety of sizes. And on this final one with the spherical sprinkles, this was really interesting. On some of it, I cut into the sprinkles themselves so you can see they have the white on the inside. And that was really cool, it's got all this contrast in there. Originally I was trying to avoid cutting into them as much as I could, but as soon as I did I just saw that contrast and it was just blew me away and so I cut into it a little bit more and I think it's really neat you can see on the left side there's a lot more sprinkles that have been cut into and then on the right side it kind of fades and so you've kind of got the whole spectrum on this ring and this one at least so far was definitely my favorite. Now I've got all of my ring blanks prepared. It's time to do some finishing touches. So I'm sanding the inside, making sure that's all smooth, got a comfort finish on there so it can actually be comfortable as a ring. And then I polish it up all the way up to about a 1200 grit, just so there's no sanding marks on there. It's completely smooth. And then the final step that I do, this is really important on a ring that's literally just made out of exposed sugar, is I take CA glue and I put a little bit on a paper towel here and I dab that straight onto the ring while the lathe is turned on and that just gives it a protective coating. It'll make it waterproof. That way water can't infiltrate into the sugar and cause our entire ring to dissolve. That would be just a bad time. But that did get me thinking though, if I took, for example, the ring that we made out of the spherical sprinkles and put that in water, I could probably get the sprinkles themselves to dissolve and we'd be left with the resin and then underneath we'd still have the sprinkles that were completely encased but we just have a really cool texture on the ring and then we just have completely intact sprinkles on the inside so that might be something worth experimenting with but I'll save that for another video if you guys are interested just let me know in the comments But anyways, I'm just finishing up the sanding on the final ring, and you can see for the outer diameter, I do a very, very similar process. Just round the edges a little bit, go through all the sanding, do the CA finish at the end, and then we are left with three finished sprinkle ring. And I actually really like the way these turned out. I particularly like the one that kind of looks like the frosted donut, as well as the spherical one. The other one with just the pure traditional sprinkles, it didn't turn out as good as I would have hoped. And I could maybe experiment with a few things to try to get better results. I think if there was a way that I could have a smaller density of the sprinkles, that way you could get a better look at them, that might work a little bit better. Right now it's just kind of a little too crowded. They're all just mushed together so close. 
But overall, I think all three of them look pretty good, and especially at a distance, some of the little issues and errors with the ring you can't even notice. And so this was just a really fun ring to make, and I was actually able to wear it. I was washing my hands, didn't have any issues like that. We were able to completely coat these in the CA finish. And so this was just a lot of fun. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I like to sometimes just kind of take a step back and just do a funner video every once in a while. These can be so fun just because they unlock all these different creative options. I don't have to worry about making sure the ring's gonna be durable or not dissolve if you chip the finish on it or anything like that. And so these are just a lot of fun. And obviously I'm gonna keep making a lot of the more traditional, higher quality rings, but let me know what you guys think. I wanna know if you guys wanna see more just for fun videos like this in the future. So if you're new to my channel, you can subscribe. That way you can see all of my latest uploads. And then as always, I've got a link in the description to both my ring website if you're interested in buying rings, as well as my ring supplies website. And that's for if you're interested in making rings yourself. And of course, always be sure to follow me on Instagram. That's where I post any of my discount codes or giveaways that I do. And it's also just a great way to see everything that I'm doing behind the scenes. I've got a lot less followers over on Instagram. And so it's a much better place for me to be able to interact with you guys, actually to reply to most of the comments, things like that. So if you're interested, as always, links are down in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.